You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast at 6. Good morning. Midway through the week. Pretty shot. A little clearer shot than 24 hours ago when it was foggy out there. Nice clear morning on this Wednesday. It does. It looks almost surreal out there. Just absolutely beautiful. John Scalzi has a great forecast today. It's a beautiful Wednesday morning. Thanks for waking up with us this morning. I'm Stephanie Webb. I'm Ray Collins and John Scalzi is here. Good morning, fella. Good morning. Yeah, it's a kind of a cool, crisp morning compared to what it was 24 hours ago, right? Feels yes. good out there. It yes. does. I like these. I like these mornings. I know. Me too. Uh, not much in the way of any kind of a fog problem this morning because of those lower dew point values. So that's good news. Morning commute should be absolutely fog free unless you're in inland areas. There may be some light fog, but nothing that'll really cause you any problems. Down to the south near Immokalee, that far south, that's where you'll probably start to see the fog as the moisture is still a little thick down in the southern tip of the state. So none of the boxes checked for your morning commute. Rain, fog, wind, tips, all just fine as you head out the door. Upper 60s to low 70s for your morning commute time. Then on your way home, you'll probably have temperatures that'll be in the low 80s to upper 70s under mostly sunny skies. So it's a nice day in store for you. No rain anywhere across the state of Florida. Really, it's very dry out there. Day planner reflecting a cool Cooler start this morning than we had yesterday morning with a 7 a.m. temperature of around 67. But by the time we get to 3, our temperatures will have warmed right back into those 80s. So it'll feel kind of toasty again this afternoon. Big changes coming up in the days ahead. Talk about that coming up in a few. All right, talk to you soon. Thank you, John. Checking first alert traffic right now. Some buildup on State Road 64 westbound as you approach the Braden River. Be aware of that. Also, uh, State Road 70 westbound as well as you approach 301. Checking farther south now to the northern half of Sarasota County. 41 southbound between Bee Ridge and Clark around Proctor there. Also Clark Road in the uh, eastbound lane around Palmer Ranch and checking down to the south now our friends in South County not much to speak of so far as we zoom in tighter there on South Venice and Northport we'll see not much to report at 602 on this Wednesday morning. Also this morning Governor Scott will be in Tampa unveiling his half billion dollar plan to keep students safer. Scott's plan includes a $500 million investment in school safety and in mental health. Now his proposal comes after emergency meetings with law enforcement, teachers, administrators, and mental health experts, as well as meetings Scott hosted with students from Stoneman Douglas High School. Now, after a few hectic weeks full of threats and lockdowns, the Manatee County School Board members are doing what they can to ensure the safety of all the students and the teachers in local schools. How exactly will the classrooms be safer now? Our Marla Spence explains from Manatee County. Marla? Yeah, Ray and Stephanie, a company out of Hillsborough County will be in Manatee County to help solve the issue of security in Manatee County schools. This comes after Manatee County saw so many threats following the horrific deadly shooting in Parkland. Now that company called Mission Critical Solutions is out of Tampa and that company is known for making federal buildings and agencies like NASA and Homeland Security secure and safe. Now Dr. Scott hopes with the Manatee County School Board tells us the company will be in town to hopefully assess how they can implement security tools like electronic doors. We will we are approaching this from an infrastructure perspective to harden the schools, which by the way, additional hardening of ballistic glass also brings schools into uh, further compliance with uh, shelter hardening for hurricanes. Uh, so we'll be doing that, uh, you know, locking systems, ensuring that teachers can lock their doors from the inside, that offices can be locked from the inside, electronic uh, access, HDI entry points that we have, like in the district office here. You notice when you go into this building, you only have one way to get in. You have to go through security, and then you're, you're led into another door. So like you heard from Dr. Scott, so many things uh, looking to be implemented in the Manatee County schools across the county uh, coming up at six o'clock. We're going to be telling you how the county plans to exactly uh, fund this project for Manatee County schools. Reporting live in Manatee County, I'm Marla Spence for ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Marla. An update now from Tallahassee where lawmakers are debating gun control in Florida. One measure would allow specially trained teachers to bring guns to class. It would also raise the age from 18 to 21 to buy rifles or long guns. The bill would also create a commission that will explore failures in the education and law enforcement systems prior to the Parkland shootings.
Well, some parents are voicing their concerns about security at Sarasota High School. One concern is this spot, School Avenue. Now, it runs right through the middle of campus. Although it's closed to vehicles during the day, it is open to the public, giving anyone access to the students. Now, the avenue is city property, so it's technically a public sidewalk. Principal David Jones says it can be a threat to student safety. All right, well, not everyone is in support of closing School Avenue, though. A neighborhood group has written to the city commission asking that they keep that particular road open. Sarasota County commissioners unveiled their wish list for road projects. Here are the top five. Number five is the Legacy Trail North Extension. Number four is the I-75 State Road 681 Interchange in Laurel and Nokomis. And the top three are all around South Venice and Northport involving a River Road Regional Interstate Connector. For road construction and closures in our area, and also breaking news in the forecast, check out our app. It's under WWSB or My Sun Coast. Well, now to a developing story in Washington. The president's top advisor and son-in-law, Jared Kushner, has been stripped of the highest level security clearance. Now, Kushner will no longer have access to the top secret intelligence. He had been working on an interim top level security clearance since the inauguration. Now, this temporary status gave him access to highly classified documents like the president's daily intelligence briefings. The FBI review has been delayed for about 15 months because of his extensive financial dealings and his failure to disclose contacts with foreigners. Now, the White House says they still have confidence in Kushner. As I said earlier, we do not comment on individual security clearances. We actually haven't commented on Jared's, as you indicated, but we have commented on his ability to do his job, which he's a valued member of the team, and he will continue to do the important work that he's been doing uh, since he started in the administration. A spokesperson for Kushner said that the new clearance poly will not affect his ability to do the very important work that he's been assigned to by the president. The late Reverend Billy Graham is getting a special salute under the Capitol Rotunda. Graham met every president back to Harry Truman and counseled most of them. President Trump met him back in 2013 before he ran for office and is expected to speak at a ceremony later today in Washington. Graham is to lie in honor until Thursday in the rotunda. His funeral and burial are scheduled for Friday. Billy Graham was 99 years old. Well, three astronauts are back on Earth this morning after a five-and-a-half-month space station mission. The team was part of Expedition 54, which started a long-term boost in crew size. The increase in the number of astronauts will enable NASA to do more research. Three new crew members are scheduled to arrive at the station on March 23rd. Now, those three crew members who are currently at the station will hold down the fort or the station until then. Can't be claustrophobic in that job. No, you cannot. But can you imagine like the views and the things that you see oh, that just a few amount of people will ever be able to see. Still ahead, first alert traffic and weather. And two years after the Oscars so white hashtag brought attention to the Oscars lack of diversity. New changes have been put in place, but is it enough? We're going to have them for you when we come back. Here's a peek at Ed Smith Stadium. It is ABC 7 Day at the ballpark. Stephanie and I will be there. If you're at the game, make sure you come by and say hello. We'll be at an ABC 7 table and also do a live shot for you at noon and 1230 in case you're by your TV instead. But first, a peek of the day. Here's John Scolsey. Thanks, Ray. We're looking at a nice day today. A little bit cooler start with 67 degrees, but by 3 p.m., we're back up to 80. All the airport hubs serving Sarasota's SRQ on time this morning, so no travel delays for you. Local temperatures are across, across the region, slightly cooler inland, but near the mid to upper 60s, close to the coast. Complete weather forecast for you, including a cooler weekend, coming up in just a few. I was always worried and scared. Mom was in pain. She wasn't going to get any better, and all the trips to the ER were painful for all of us. Then we called Tidewell Hospice, and everything changed. Now she has care in our home when she needs it, surrounded by family. We know we don't have much time left with Mom, but we decided to make the best out of that time. 
Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. This is an important announcement. If you're between 50 and 85 and worried about your loved ones, you can still get affordable life insurance for peace of mind. My life insurance coverage is guaranteed, and I was not required to get a medical exam. I had high blood pressure and diabetes, and I got my coverage with one telephone call. No exam necessary. I'm a smoker, and I wanted to take care of my family. I called to get my life insurance and my affairs in order. I wanted to do the right thing. Call Final Expense No Exam Insurance. Your rates are guaranteed and will never increase. I called and learned that this insurance cannot be canceled, even if you get sick or gain weight. And there are no restrictions on how my beneficiaries use the money when I'm gone. Approval was easy, and the price was right. I wanted to do this for my children. Call 800-738-9812. 800-738-9812. Our overall experience working with California Closets was phenomenal. Calm, reassuring. Through happenstance, we ended up paired with our designer, Jen. She was someone who not only was patient, someone who was professional. She's become extended family. She had great insight to help direct me towards those things that could make our dreams come true. We are the Greens, and this is our California Closet story. Everything all right? Actually, you know how Tom had knee surgery? Sure. We found out Brad's been taking his painkillers. And it turns out he's been doing it for a while. Most people don't know what to say about drugs, but we do. Visit us at drugfree.org. Get breaking news alerts focused on the Sun Coast. Download the ABC7 News app. First alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. Your calendar for the weekend looks pretty nice. Downtown Venice Art Classic, both weekend days. It's the 17th annual with over 200 artists, many different media types. Forecast looks good too. 10 a.m. temperature when it kicks off will be in the mid 60s, sunny, dry, light north wind. And then as it wraps up at about 5 o'clock in the evening, low 70s, sunny, dry. High UV index, so be sure and wear that SPF 15 or better sunscreen because you'll be needing it that day. Uh, Looking at a a lot of very pleasant temperatures across the region with lower dew point values, it feels pretty pleasant out there actually. 73 degrees in Wachula, Arcadia at 64, 64. Did I say 73? 63. And then 74 degrees in Mayaka. Parish at 63, 64 in Bradenton, 63 in Sarasota. Venice and Inglewood both coming in at 66 degrees, as is Longbow Key. Across the region, dew point values have really significantly dropped and continue to do so. We're at 60 degree dew point now. We may actually dip into the 50 dew points for this morning. Upper 50s. That, <laughs> I'm all choked up about it. That is a very comfortable dew point value, I think. I mean, I, I think it's very pleasant. East wind comes in at about 6, 63. As I mentioned, the temperature will get up to a warm temperature this afternoon. The thing about dry air is it cools off effectively and efficiently, but it also warms up very fast as well. 72 by 9 a.m., almost the 80 degree mark by lunchtime. And then as we head into the afternoon, 83 degrees by 3 p.m. It was a beautiful afternoon yesterday, I thought. A little on the humid side. I was doing some planting yesterday, and uh, it was very nice indeed. Not much in the way of any kind of rainfall around, but this afternoon is going to be spectacular, I think. A lot of dry air aloft. That's indicated here by these tan colorizations coming on through. That's kind of a microwave signal of some drier air aloft, and that's going to really just eliminate our rain chance today. Low pressure area to the north of us, though, producing some rain showers at this hour in Atlanta. No airport delays being reported, as we just showed you, but nevertheless, this whole system is gradually drifting toward the east and could kick up a few more thunderstorms a little later in the day. Could be some airport delays at Atlanta and Charlotte because of that. Atlanta first and then Charlotte much later on. Not much in the way of a rainfall chance currently or later in the afternoon. 
That low pressure area accompanied by another low pressure area kind of team up together to form one front that'll come through here and bring us some different weather for the weekend. Big time different weather. Until then, we'll see a spike in our dew point values and the humidity starting tonight and through tomorrow because high pressure will be pushed south to accommodate those approaching fronts. So our winds are going to have to accommodate that as well. Shifting to the south, we'll see that spike in dew point tomorrow. Probably two more warm days today and tomorrow. And then possibly late Thursday night, early Friday morning, a shower, maybe a small chance, but it's there. And then a cooler weekend. There's much cooler air back to the west. And that's what's in store for us. Some of that air and probably for a prolonged period of time. Southwest wind comes in at about five knots. That'll bring you two foot seas and a light chop. Nice day on the waters. Water temperature up a little bit. It'll probably start to cool a bit though this weekend. 83 our daytime high today. Tomorrow 82 Friday. We cloud up just a little bit perhaps during the uh, morning hours. 20% chance of a shower probably pre dawn and then temperatures begin to fall over the weekend. 75 on Saturday Sunday Oscar night. Stephanie will be tweeting. Catch it. It's going to be interesting. She's got a lot of good things to say. A credentialed film critic. So it's not just a fluff that she'll be tweeting. And then as we head into the beginning of next work week, some pretty nice temperatures, I think 70, 74, something like that. Back to you. All right. Thank you for that, John Scalzi. It is time now for your first alert forecast, our first alert traffic, I should say, because I'm not doing John Scalzi's weather. Wow. Listen, and we're looking at the traffic out there this morning, starting to see some slowdowns right there at State Road 64 as you're coming into Bradenton. That's a bit of a congested spot, as well as State Road 70 around that 301 interchange. Heading into North Sarasota, those roads are actually still looking pretty decent. There are some slowdowns right there on Clark Road as well. That's one hot spot of the morning to look out for. Heading into South Sarasota, we do have one accident. It looks like right there on 75 to tell you about um, that we may or may not be getting to, but we will tell you about it eventually at some point this morning. There it is. It is on northbound. There's a vehicle fire at right after exit 195 on Laurel Road, so be aware of that. I-75 north, northbound, a vehicle fire after exit 195 on Laurel Road. Heading a little south. Those roads are actually looking pretty good in there. A little bit of congestion here and there on 41, but nothing too bad out there this morning at 617. Well, it has been two years since the hashtag Oscar So White brought attention to the award show's lack of diversity. And as Marcy Gonzalez tells us, the Academy has made some changes and they're reflected in this year's nominations. Well, I'm here at the Academy Awards, uh, otherwise known as the uh, White People's Choice Awards. The glaring lack of racial diversity among the 2015 and 2016 Academy Award nominees sparking awareness and some change carrying into this there year's nominations. For achievement in directing. In that category, Mexican director Guillermo del Toro is considered a favorite to win. And Jordan Peele is nominated for directing and writing Get Out. So this kind of recognition goes bigger than me. It goes bigger than us. And I had that when I was a kid. Whoopi Goldberg won for be Best uh, Supporting Actress. Nominated for Best Supporting Actress this year, Octavia Spencer and Mary J. Blige, who's also up for original song. I'll be looking for us. Denzel Washington and Daniel Kaluuya nominated for Best Actor. Among the nominees for original screenplay, Kumail Nanjani, and for best adapted screenplay, Dee Reese, now the first black woman ever to get an Oscar nod for writing cause for reflection in as much as it's cause for celebration. Like, why did it take 90 years to get here? Researchers at USC Annenberg studying diversity in the film industry asking the same, saying while there has been some progress, Hollywood still has a long way to go. In 2016, out of 100 films, 25 didn't have a single African-American or black character on screen. Not one that spoke. Over 40 didn't feature Asian-American characters. And over 50 didn't feature Latino characters. We need to tell stories that represent all of humanity. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. And of course, you can see the Oscars on Sunday night right here, ABC 7. The uh, red carpet coverage starts around 6.30, so you can watch everybody arriving, see some of the interviews, and then 8 o'clock is when the big show starts. There's a live picture right now at the Dolby Theater at 3.20 a.m. in Los Angeles. That is right, looking good out there. The big night, Sunday night. Still ahead on Good Morning Sun Coast. The limits for carry-on luggage keeps on shrinking. That is right. One woman's bizarre experience with United Airlines. Wait to see this. We've got it for you right after this. 
Motor Trend said the new Alfa Romeo Giulia is hands down the best sports sedan you can buy today. And named it the 2018 Motor Trend Car of the Year. Rediscover your passion for driving at Sunset Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. I just had a very educational ride with Nina. Did you learn anything? Where do I begin? So all this stuff goes into a safety check. Yep. It's a long list. It's important stuff. Test the smoke detector. Yep. Check the breaker box. Yep. Meter the GFCIs. Ground fault circuit interrupters. Why do that? <laughs> Call 888-8-SPARKY. Minnie, you make it look easy. Thanks, but don't do it yourself. Who's your guy? Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. I owed the IRS $10,000. I owed the IRS $20,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now, and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I call Tax Solutions Now, and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. We saved our home and overcame the most powerful collection agency in the world. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 1-800-565-7740. That's 1-800-565-7740. Hi, I'm Chef Bob. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7, where we'll be serving up the most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. My Hometown Fest is coming to Nathan Benderson Park Saturday, March 3rd. Join us for culinary favorites from across the U.S. paired with your favorite craft beers. There's also great live music and activities for adults and kids. Buy your tickets today at myhometownfest.org. When evaluating the Alfa Romeo Stelvio, Car and Driver Magazine said every crossover should be this good to drive. We agree. Rediscover your passion for driving at Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. Slightly clearer picture than yesterday. The yeah. pastel sunrise yes. underway. Nice crisp morning, as John Scalzi says. It's beautiful out there, Dave. We're having another good day today. I should see a high of 83 degrees right now. 623 as you awaken on this final day of February. Well, a traveler experienced a frustrating situation with her carry-on bag. Yeah, an airline employee insisted her bag was too big, even though it fit fine in the measuring rack beforehand. ABC's Kenneth Skipson has the woman's frustrating ordeal. In this morning's GMA First Look. You're telling me this bag doesn't fit in here? The friendly skies? You're telling me that this this bag, this purse here doesn't fit in here. This no, is what you're telling me. Yeah, it doesn't. Not so friendly for 27-year-old Natalia Rutkowski, who was traveling with her mother from Chicago to Newark, when according to them, a United Airlines agent stopped them from checking in, all because of the size of her mom's carry-on. The agent then reportedly taking the bag out of the rack, placing it on top. We're sticking by the rules. Rules are rules. You're telling me this bag doesn't fit in here? That fits like here. What are you talking about? This bag this is, fits this, in this here. Is, they say the agent was fed up and started to storm off. And I did conversation is done. My last go. And coming up at 7 a.m., did those two women actually make it onto their flight? With your GMA First Look, I'm Candace Gibson, ABC News, New York. To most people, I look like most people. But on the inside, I feel chronic, widespread pain. Fibromyalgia may be invisible to others, but my pain is real. Fibromyalgia is thought to be caused by overactive nerves. Lyrica is believed to calm these nerves. I'm glad my doctor prescribed Lyrica. For some, Lyrica delivers effective relief for moderate to even severe fibromyalgia pain and improves function. 
Lyrica may cause serious allergic reactions, suicidal thoughts, or actions. Tell your doctor right away if you have these, new or worse depression, unusual changes in mood or behavior, swelling, trouble breathing, rash, hives, blisters, muscle pain with fever, tired feeling, or blurry vision. Common side effects, dizziness, sleepiness, weight gain, swelling of hands, legs, and feet. Don't drink alcohol while taking Lyrica. Don't drive or use machinery until you know how Lyrica affects you. Those who've had a drug or alcohol problem may be more likely to misuse Lyrica. With less pain, I can do more with my family. Talk to your doctor today. See if Lyrica can help. Hi everybody, I'm Chef Mark Pazitano. This is Chef Bob Patello. We're here from Aprons Publix Cooking School. Bob, what do we got cooking today? We're gonna do a spiced pork tenderloin with a nice zesty apple slaw. Wow, yeah, that sounds, sounds great. Good. It's gonna be. Over here I have some pork tenderloin. I cut it, I took a little taco seasoning, a little bit of smoked paprika, and a little oil, and I let it marinate on here. Smoked paprika. It's the stuff smells like barbecue potatoes. Yeah, that's what Bob right. so always we're says. We're gonna take this and put this in the grill pan, and we're gonna make believe it's going because I don't have it hot enough, but at home have it hotter. So crank that up for me, Mark. You got so it, fun. bud. So we put our pork in there. We're doing medallions here. You can do the whole tenderloin and slice it if you want to, but you'll see I like the way this looks better. It so looks you let great. that cook. Over here, pretty cool stuff, huh? Over here we have some green onions, okay? This is a little bit of orange segments. I have some cilantro, my favorite. A Bob, little, Bob loves cilantro. A little bit of jalapeno. This is the spicy part, sliced real thin. And these are apples that I used on the mandolin. That's okay? a neat tool. Yeah, it's pretty cool stuff for an apple slaw. We're gonna put this in here. And then we're gonna take some orange zest. You just zest the orange, put some orange zest in here. A little bit Very of nice. apple cider vinegar. Nice. Anything else? Anything else going in here? I, 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 it looks juice. like you got a lot of stuff going on And then on we're gonna put orange juice in here, all right? Now, the orange juice, whatever you wanna do, just Fresh orange juice, so you can buy the other stuff. It's Florida, do whatever you want. Now, the thing is, I took the zest off the orange earlier. The zest isn't off here. Did you take a sticker off? Well, yeah, I was gonna get to that. That's the most important thing, man. Everyone asks this in the cooking school. It's the most important thing about zesting. It's not how much you do, it's take the sticker off, man. <laughs> Even when you wash it, the sticker stays on. <laughs> but anyways, you take all this, all and right. you mix it around. That looks great. Starting tomorrow, be sure to stop by our Publix Apron Simple Meals kiosk, pick up our recipe card and all the ingredients after sampling this delicious dish. Bob, it looks awesome. Way to go. My California Closets designer is a rock star. She was able to design the most beautiful space for me. When I turn the lights on, it's breathtaking. It's just a little slice of organized heaven. The California Closet team was so professional, so reliable. It was seriously a dream come true. My name is Jill, and this is my California Closet story. If you've never truly loved your car, you've clearly never owned a Subaru. Subaru is Kelly Blue Book's 2017 most trusted brand, best overall brand, and lowest five-year cost to own. And Subaru Impreza is an IIHS top safety pick for 11 years running. Lease the all-new 2018 Subaru Impreza for just $195 a month for 42 months with zero due at signing. That's right, not one penny. Get more for your money during the Subaru True Love event at Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Loaded with big laughs, colorful characters, and the songs that made the 20s roar, Bullets Over Broadway is bringing musical theater back with a bang. Your attendance is requested at the Players Center for this wild Broadway musical opening February 21st. Call the Players at 365-2494 or visit the website at theplayers.org. This is one Broadway show that is sure to knock them dead. Here we go. We're gonna go out there in the rain. Gonna get wet. All right, here we go. Oh, look at the rain! Oh, look at the rain! Okay, quick. Oh, yeah, yes. So much fun. Mwah.
You are the best protection she has. Buddy up. I'm Jill Harrington. Please visit HelpSaveTheNextGirl.com and get involved. When it comes to drinking, what do you think moderation is? The U.S. Dietary Guidelines define moderation as up to one drink a day for women and up to two drinks a day for men. So what's a drink? The guidelines say a drink equals 12 ounces of beer, 5 ounces of wine, or a cocktail with 1.5 ounces of distilled spirits. Each contains the same amount of alcohol. Like to learn more? Visit drinkinmoderation.org. Watch Good Morning Sun Coast on ABC7, weekdays starting at 5. I think it's really important that we're all together to kind of start the healing process and rebuilding our memories within the halls of the school. Coming up on Good Morning Sun Coast. Students at Stoneman Douglas return to school today exactly two weeks since that horrific shooting. I'm live at the Manatee County School Board where school officials here are looking to work with the company to help make Manatee County school buildings a lot safer. We're telling you how straight ahead. Your Suncoast News starts now. You are watching Good Morning Suncoast at 630. Good morning to you. Happy Wednesday. Another beautiful day out there as we take a look outside. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for waking up and joining us this morning. I'm Stephanie Webb. I'm Ray Collins. Pretty shot there of the horizon from our tower camera. Last day of February the 28th and should see another warm day. 82 degrees out there today, John Scalzi. Hey, uh, at least 82 degrees today. Yesterday we hit 85. So uh, yeah, and came pretty close to breaking a record or at least tying a record, which was 86. So uh, I think we're, we'll get to at least 83 today. I think um, we're starting off a little bit cooler, but it's dry air. So the drier air that's allowed it to get a little bit cooler also means that we have less of a fog problem this morning. And in fact, visibility most everywhere on our fog maps this morning are coming in at about 10 miles or better. So not a big issue. The further south you go, though, the better your chances of encountering some denser fog. But it's really not a problem for our neck of the woods. Dry on radar today. Satellite view shows lots of sunshine in store for us. Maybe a few passing clouds riding in on a northwesterly wind flow aloft. And the day planner calls for a cooler start to the day, but rapidly rising into the 80s by lunchtime. And then uh, we'll probably top it out at about 83 today. Complete forecast coming up in a few. All right, talk to you soon. Thank you, John. Checking the roads right now. Some problems there on 301 northbound as you head toward the... Uh, Overpass at 75 in Ellington, so be aware of that. Otherwise, pretty, pretty clear so far this morning. Checking the northern half of Sarasota County. Clark Road, some build up there in the eastbound lane. You cross over Beneva and head toward Palmer Ranch. Issue out there as well. South County, there's a car fire on 75 northbound around Laurel, so be aware of that. Avoid it and take 41 if you can, because that's pretty clear right now, because as you see, northbound 75 at Laurel Road, an issue there at 633 on this Wednesday morning. Well, after weeks of threats against students resulting in lockdowns, Manatee County School Board members are trying to formulate a plan to ensure the safety of all students and teachers in local schools. So how exactly will classrooms be safer? Here's our Marla Spence live at the school board in Manatee County. Yeah, Ray and Stephanie, next week a security co company will be right in Manatee County to look at ways to make Manatee County school buildings a lot safer after Manatee County school board members say eight to ten serious threats happened on the Sun Coast, causing them to be investigated by police, the sheriff's office, and also the FBI. The company known as Mission Critical Solutions out of Tampa is looking to put electronic doors, new systems like uh, electronic doors and also locks to allow students and teachers to lock the doors from inside a classroom and also electronic entry points into Manatee County schools will be implemented into classrooms, hopefully by this company. The big question, though, is ex is exactly how will this project be funded for Manatee County schools within the, the district? Uh, we're going to have to work through that, but it will be substantive. But, but fortunately, this, this county and the taxpayers have been generous with us on the capital side of, of the investment. And so, as you know, we have a sales tax for, for capital, which, which will help on the, the hardening side of it in the IT systems. 
This week, the Mantee County School Board members will be looking at ways on how exactly that project will be funded, especially today as Governor Scott is in town to talk about his $500 million plan to ensure student safety across the state of Florida. I'm Marla Spence reporting live in Manatee County for ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Thanks, Marla. Well, today, some students at the Manatee School of the Arts plan to participate in an organized walkout to urge Congress to prevent another school shooting. It's going to take place right outside of the school in Palmetto this afternoon. According to one student, around 300 people plan to participate. Manatee County is working to increase security at schools. Parents are taking their kids to school on Monday. They'll notice a much greater law enforcement presence on that day because the district says deputies will now be in every elementary school in Manatee County as for the high school, there will now be two deputies, not one. Middle schools will still have one deputy in each school. Well, city leaders in Venice are increasing funding for school resource officers, opening the door to a full-time officer at Venice Elementary School. Now, in the past, Venice High School and Venice Elementary have shared one resource officer, but now the Venice Police Department wants to increase security. The police department hopes to have a new officer hired and trained by the end of the school year. In the meantime, patrol officers will stay at the schools during the school day. Well, at this hour across our state, students are arriving at Stoneman Douglas High School in Broward County. And as ABC's John Lawrence reminds us, it's been exactly two weeks to the day since that shooting there. 14 days after a shooting rampage claimed 17 lives, students at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School returned to the scene of the crime. Nervous and anxious about going back to school, going back to classes, yet at the same time feeling kind of glad that we're going to all be together. It's like the first step to moving on from the tragedy that happened. Florida Governor Rick Scott announced plans to spend $500 million toward school safety. We've got to invest in metal detectors. We've got to invest in bulletproof glass. We've got to invest in steel doors. Florida lawmakers failed to pass a ban on assault-style rifles on Monday, but another gun-related bill moved forward Tuesday. The bill would forbid gun sales to people under 21 years old but an amendment to ban the sale of bump stocks failed. We've got to do everything we can to make sure that somebody that wants to harm any one of our students can never do it again. Congress is also working toward gun legislation. Democrats and Republicans owe it to these students to act and act in a real and significant way. Meanwhile, a new era begins for students at Stoneman Douglas. I think it's really important that we're all together to kind of start the healing process and rebuilding our memories within the halls of the school. I'm John Lawrence reporting. President Trump will meet today with some members of Congress over gun legislation. Officers who responded to the Parkland shooting are being honored for their bravery. Commissioners designated February the 27th as Officer Michael Leonard Appreciation Day and Coconut Creek, P Creek Police Department Appreciation Day in Broward County. Officer Leonard helped capture the gunman who was accused of opening fire inside Stoneman Douglas High School on that day, February 14th, killing 17 people. Leonard says he's grateful to simply have done his part. When you, when you come against evil like that, and you have children at home that, that are about that age, it, it, it's very close to my heart and it was, it was difficult, but I'm so honored that I was able to be a part and, and do my part. The Coconut Creek, Creek Police Chief says that they are very proud of how Officer Leonard, Leonard handled that situation. For the latest story on this breaking news, plus your up-to-the-minute first alert forecast, just head over to our app. You can find it under WWSB or My Sun Coast. It is 6.39 and the clock is ticking on state lawmakers in Tallahassee. The session is set to end on March 9th, and state law requires the budget to be finished 72 hours before a final vote. The House and Senate have agreed to set aside about $80 million for tax cuts in Tallahassee. Still ahead on Good Morning Sun Coast, the latest in your first alert weather and traffic, and millennials on the move. Why young adults in the Sun Coast are looking to live elsewhere when we come back. It is ABC 7 Day at the ballpark. We hope to see you. If you come out to the game, we'll be there. That is right. We're going to be out there today um, around 1130 all the way through noon. We'll be doing our live show out there as well during the noon show. So come out, join us, say hi, meet us. We'd love to meet you at Ed Smith Stadium. John Scalzi. And may I add perfect weather for that as well. Picking up the kids at the school bus stop this morning. They'll see 71 degrees as they get dropped off this afternoon. 
83. Temperatures across the region generally in the 60s most everywhere. Low 60s inland, upper 60s near the coast. And it's a 10 out of 10 chance for outside recess today. We'll have the complete forecast for you coming up in a few. What if you had a medical emergency away from home? My chest hurts. I can't breathe. What you need is Mobile Help, America's premier mobile medical alert system. Most systems only work at home, but with Mobile Help, you get help outside the home with coverage nationwide on one of the largest cellular networks at the press of a button. Call the number on your screen for a free full color brochure. We'll send you everything you need, including this base station, the patented mobile device, and the waterproof pendant and wrist button. You can also add the fall button that automatically detects falls and signals help. Call today and receive a risk-free 30-day trial. There is no equipment to buy and no long-term contract. For a limited time, you will also receive a free emergency key box with your plan purchase. Remember, mobile help keeps you safe coast to coast. Call 1-800-916-8638. That's 1-800-916-8638. Hi, I'm Chef Bob. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7, where we'll be serving up the most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. Florida Studio Theater presents Native Gardens. Stately gardens and cultures clash, turning friendly neighbors into feuding adversaries. When a disagreement over a long-standing fence spirals into an all-out comedic battle of taste, privilege, and entitlement, no one comes out smelling like a rose. Critics are calling Native Gardens timeless as well as timely, smart, and first-rate. Audience are calling it one of the best. Native Gardens is now playing. Tickets can be purchased by calling 941-366-9000 or by visiting floridastudiotheater.org. We answered the call of duty and left our homes to serve in far-off lands. Now, we answer another call, this time at home, in our own communities, to respond in times of chaos, to use our strength, our skills, and our experiences to bring hope amid devastation and destruction. Together, as a team of brothers and sisters, we're continuing our mission to make this country a little stronger and a little better each day. We are Team Rubicon. Chris Domine is a husband, father, an athlete, even an Iron Man. But 10 years ago, Chris's kidneys were failing. The doctor said, if you don't do dialysis, if you don't get a kidney transplant, you are going to die. Then Chris received a second chance, made possible by an organ donor. Your well-being changes from loss of hope to better times ahead. Imagine what you could make possible. Learn more and sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Now your ABC7 First Alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. Nice viewer photos sent in to us. Uh, this is the celery fields. If you have never been there, you really should make it a point to go out. Absolutely gorgeous. Always a lot of very smart folks from the Audubon Society out there available, especially Saturday mornings to uh, discuss the different kinds of birds that make that area their stop off place or permanent home. Cindy Desmond, thank you very much for sending that in. Gorgeous place. Longboat Key, beautiful sunset last night. I think we'll have another beautiful one again tonight. Skip, thank you. And uh, Michelle sent this one in of uh, yesterday's moon. A beautiful morning sky. The moon was great. She also noted the uh, planet down beneath the moon. That, by the way, is Jupiter. Uh, sunsets at, uh, well, it just set. But uh, you can still probably see uh, Jupiter and Mars and Saturn up in the sky, southern sky, low on the horizon this morning. Absolutely nice, crystal clear morning out there. We have a temperature coming in at 63 degrees in Mayaca, 64 in Arcadia, 63 in Wachula, 66 at Longbow Key. Sarasota comes in at 63, 66 in Venice, 66 in Inglewood, 63 in Bradenton. Current conditions show a dew point value of 60 degrees out there, so that's pretty nice. That lower dew point value, uh, meaning that the air feels kind of crisp and uh, pleasant, I think, out there. Also means less of a fog problem this morning. 90% uh, relative humidity. That will really start to drop as temperatures begin to rise. By 9 a.m., we'll hit 72. And that dry air also means a cooler start to the morning, but it also means uh, it warms pretty quickly. So as we get into the noontime hour, we'll be close to the 80 degree mark once again. And then as we head into 3 p.m., about 83 degrees, we'll start to notice the humidity beginning to return later in the afternoon as our winds shift a little bit more to the southwest. 
But no rain in the forecast for today. This kind of tan colorization that you see here, that's the satellite's uh, image of dry air, and it's all over the state of Florida. To the north of us, though, we got some moisture around. A low pressure area producing some rain showers just north of Atlanta, but as I mentioned across our region, now nah, we're not going to see any rain today. Double barrel low pressure areas producing the inclement weather moving across the deep south this morning. Those fronts will eventually work their way through our area. High pressure will be pushed south in order to accommodate those approaching fronts as our winds begin to twist to a more southerly direction overnight tonight. That pumps the moisture in. It sets the stage for potentially an isolated shower as we head into uh, probably Thursday night, Friday morning as that front begins to work its way through. So two more days of warm temperatures, a shower perhaps late Thursday night, early Friday morning, and then a much cooler weekend. Some of the cooler air back to the west will be sliding to the east, so we won't get a, a major cool down. But we will get brushed by some of the cooler air at the southern extent of that cold air dome. And so consequently, our temperatures will fall back to about where they should be for this time of year, to tell you the truth. Southwest wind at 5 to 10 knots, becoming more southerly overnight at about 5 knots. Light chop on Bay and Inland Waters, beautiful boating weather. Forecast calls for 83 today, 66 the nighttime low, 82 tomorrow, 68. A little bit warmer tomorrow night because of the increase in humidity due to a south wind. And then Friday, we start to cloud up just a little bit. 20% chance of a shower early in the morning, probably pre-dawn. And a daytime high temperature significantly cooler, but not as cool as it's going to get. Over the weekend, temperatures fall even further to about where they should be at this time of year. Beautiful sunny skies. Sunday, Oscar night, don't forget that. And then Monday and Tuesday, looking at temperatures that will be in the seasonable range, mid-70s to maybe even some uh, slightly warmer temperatures on Tuesday. Back to you. All right, thanks, John. Let's take a look outside to your ABC 7 first alert traffic out there. Still looking pretty good. We have got the, new, the normal slowdowns, especially on that bridge heading into downtown Brainton. That one is definitely clogged. Also seeing some traffic right there on State Road 70 and the 301 interchange. Heading into North Sarasota, a Fruitville is starting to see some slowdowns out there as well. And then uh, from that, most of the southern areas are looking pretty smooth. There is that spot right there on northbound uh, 75. There is a car fire, northbound vehicle fire right after exit 175 Lower Road. If you can, maybe take 41 since that one's not looking too busy around this time of the morning. Other than that, your traffic is looking pretty good out there this morning at 647. Well, Boeing has a big new job to build the next two Air Force One planes. Now, those two planes are already in California. They just need some big upgrades, like adding an emergency clinic with an operating table, a fully functional kitchen, extensive electronics, and, of course, that heat shield to protect it from a nuclear blast. Just wow. a couple upgrades in there. And all that deal comes with a price tag of about $4 billion. Both are requested to be finished by 2021. New security is being tested now at New York's Penn Station to keep commuters safe there. Amtrak is trying out testing equipment that scans for explosive devices. They're working with TSA to test two devices called standoff explosive detection units. The machines scan for concealed explosive devices like a suicide vest, and they use what's called wave technology instead of the usual radiation. Back in Florida now, new developments surrounding backup generators in state nursing homes. The state house may require nursing homes to have backup power sources. The rule passed a committee yesterday. The governor originally invoked an emergency order, but this would now make it official long term. If approved, almost 600 nursing homes in Florida would have to be in compliance by July 1st. This comes in the wake of a dozen fatalities during Hurricane Irma last September in Hollywood Hills, Florida, when a home there lost power. Well, about 9% of Sarasota is now made up of millennials. Those are the groups that are born in, from the early 1980s until the early 2000s. But many of those are looking to get away from Sarasota, which could hurt the city in the first place. Now, half of the millennials surveyed by Sarasota's Young Professionals Group say they want to leave the area because of the high cost of housing and a lower income compared to the rest of the country. U.S. News & World Report found that housing costs here are 9% higher in Sarasota compared to the national average. But workers are making about 8% less compared to the rest of the country. Housing has really been a difficult issue for our wages to keep up with the price appreciation. The cost of housing has keeps going up and up and up. Um, and that's a real challenge when we look at retention because young professionals are moving around a lot more. 
Now, according to the U.S. Census, millennials are now a larger generation than the baby boomers. They're also the most educated, which is another reason we want to keep them here on the Sun Coast. Coming up tonight at 6, we're going to take a look at how businesses can help, help keep those younger workers in our area. An ongoing issue here for decades. Yes, yes. Higher cost of living, but then lower salaries. Yeah, We've got to even a, that out a little bad bit. Bad recipe. Yeah. Up next, more top headlines. And it's ABC 7 Day at Ed Smith Stadium. A live picture there of the ballpark. That's right. We would love to see you come out and meet us. We're going to be out there. ABC 7 Today, myself and Ray, will be out there uh, doing meet and greet as well as doing some live stuff in the news show. More news after this on Good Morning Sun Coast. So Matt told me to meet him at 7 a.m. sharp right here. It is now 7.01 a.m. You think Matt will leave without me? Hey, is Matt here? Uh, long con. Long con. Just missed him. Just missed him. All done. Mr. Sparky guarantees they're on time and the repair is free, so chop chop. Call 888-8-SPARKY. Matt, you started without me. I finished without you, too. Head over to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota, where you'll always get better prices and a bigger selection. Like the area's largest selection of seven passenger vehicles. Get KBB's 2017 Best Buy Award overall winner, the Chrysler Pacifica, for just $25,999. Or load up the family in your new Dodge Grand Caravan for just $20,999. Drive away in a new Dodge Journey for as little as $17,999. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but one of the teachers was Miss Araceli. She gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing, and she'll sit there with you until you get it. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. I will always place the nation first. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. I will never accept defeat. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. I will never quit. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. A decade of war has taken an unprecedented toll on our men and women in uniform. Hundreds of thousands of our veterans are suffering from the trauma of war. At Justice for Vets, we believe that every veteran should have the opportunity for treatment and restoration. Get involved and go to justiceforvets.org. Help put treatment within reach of veterans in crisis. Veterans fought for our freedom. Now it's our turn to fight for theirs. Everybody can make something because I think everyone has a spark of creativity and the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That, I think, is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, step-by-step -step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. Get breaking news alerts focused on the Sun Coast. Download the ABC 7 News app. Nice day in progress. There's a shot of the Intracoastal, also known as Sarasota Bay. 10th Street boat ramp, Long Boat Key. A lot in that picture there. Yeah, it's beautiful out there again today. Another good day coming up. All right, well, here are some of the top stories that we're following for you on the Sun Coast today. Governor Scott will be in Tampa this morning to unveil his half billion dollar plan to increase school security. Plans include everything from bulletproof windows to police in every school. Plus, in Washington, the president's top advisor and son-in-law, Jared Kushner, has been stripped of the highest level of security clearance. And students at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School are going back to class for the first time this morning. It's been exactly two weeks since the massacre.
All right, let's take a look out there for your first alert. Traffic, just a broad brush view. Don't forget, we do have that hot spot. There is on the uh, on I-75 northbound, a vehicle fire right after exit 195, that lower road exit. If you can, maybe jump over and take 41 instead. That one is not showing too much traffic around this time of the morning. But other than that, your traffic is looking good. John Scalzi? So nice for this afternoon. Daytime highs will top out warm, even though we're starting off a little on the cooler side. By 9 a.m., we'll be in the 70s. And then as we head into the afternoon, 83 degrees as we taper off into the evening hours. 73 in the evening looks great for you folks out there. Um, according to visitbeaches.org, the uh, the Moat Marine website, the uh, water is clear everywhere, though I will tell you down around Gasparilla, there have been a few dead fishes spotted. Mm, doesn't smell All good. Right, no well, a nice day for a ball game. That is right. It is ABC 7 day at Ed Smith Stadium. The Orioles are going to be hosting the St. Louis Cardinals. First pitch is set for 105 today, and we're going to be out there live. So if you see us, come by and stop by. They're going to let us out of the station together it? for the first time. What are they thinking? Our first appearance. That is right. 105 <laughs> ball game should be a nice one. Orioles hosting the cards, the stuff you just said. So hope to see you there at Ed Smith Stadium at ABC 7 day. Thanks for watching. Good morning, Suncoast. That is right. Good morning, America is up next.